Amen. We bless God for this day. We're going to shake it off and give God some praise. Amen. And we thank God. Come on, stand to your feet. We give God some praise today. Bless his holy name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise and thanks. We bless your holy name. We thank you, Father God, for another day. We thank you, Father God, for this day we have never seen before. And especially today, this is Father's Day. And we thank you, Father, for being our Father. We thank you, Father, for being our Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father, for being our Holy Father. We thank you, Father, because you are the best dad anybody could ever have. And we glorify you and we praise you and we lift you up with our hallelujahs, with the clapping of our hands, with a shout of victory unto you because we are victorious children. We are the sheep of your pasture, oh God, and we bless you. We glorify you, hallelujah, and we thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we come together to give you praise. We come together to give you the honor. We come together to give you the glory because you are worthy, hallelujah, of all the praise, hallelujah. We bless you and thank you for allowing us to get together today to come into the temple, Father God. You gave us a mind to come to you. You gave us the activity of our limbs, oh God. The breath that, that flows from our lungs, oh God. The blood that runs warm in our vein. We thank you, Father. Bless you, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Glory, hallelujah. Give him the praise of your lips, hallelujah. We bless you on today. We love you, God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We ask that you have mercy upon us as we go forth this day. Oh, Lord, please forgive us of anything that we have said or done wrong. Oh, Lord, we want to be better children of thine. We want to honor you, Lord. We want to glorify you, Lord. We want to make you proud of us, oh God. And all we got to do is be obedient unto you. Thank you, oh God, for talking to us. Thank you, oh God. You got a mouth that you talk to us. Not just in your word, God, but you whisper in our ears the way a father does to his children. We thank you, oh God, that you are eternal. We thank you, oh God, that you, you are our father and our God. We thank you, Father. We love you and we know, Lord, you are not blind. You see everything. Lord, you are not deaf. You hear everything. Lord, you are not limited. You are everywhere. So we give you the praise. We give you the honor and we give you the glory. We ask that you will bless your manservant that you have placed here, oh God, to take care of your children here, Lord. Uphold them with the right hand of the righteousness, oh God. Breathe a fresh wind upon them, Lord God. Let them know, oh God, that it's not in vain, oh God, that he continue to work in the vineyard that you would have him to be, Lord, to do. And we ask that you will bless his, our lady. Oh, God, we ask you to prop her up, too, on every leaning side, oh, God. Give us strength, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. It's not easy, Lord God. We know that everything is going to work all right. But, Lord, bless those that are here. Bless every home that's represented. Those that are on the line, Lord, bless every home that's represented. And bless those that are on their way, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we give you glory and praise. And we thank you. Come on, raise a praise up in here. Praise him, glory to your name. Lord, we thank you, hallelujah. We bless your name and we glorify you. In Jesus' holy name. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Clap your hands, oh God. In Jesus' name, bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody come to celebrate our great and mighty God? Hallelujah. Anybody grateful just another day he'd allowed you to see? Hallelujah. Growing up, they used to say, clothed in your right mind, hallelujah. With life, health, and strength, hallelujah. We take it for granted so often, but hallelujah. I thank the Lord for being good to us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Oh, why don't you bless the Lord with me? Bless the Lord with me.
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on and magnify him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's been a good God. Hallelujah. And he's so worthy of praise. Hallelujah. Every chance, every opportunity we get. Hallelujah. If you just think on the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. And all that he's done. Hallelujah. All that he did that he didn't have to do. Hallelujah. He is well worthy of praise. Come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. And magnify our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we bless you. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless the old I will 
bless the old Lord. Hallelujah. Do I have a few thankful people? Hallelujah, Jesus. With thanksgiving in their heart that don't mind putting praise on their lips. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know we accustom to music. Hallelujah. But there ought to be a song deep down on the inside. Hallelujah that you can't keep to yourself. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we give him great praise and we magnify him. Hallelujah, Jesus. You don't realize the power that lies within you sometime. Hallelujah. In the net of Ashanda. I wear home sometime and my husband gets to singing a little ditty. And at most of the time, y'all know him. He made it up along the way. Like Sister Odell. But he sings it long enough and he's conv his conviction is just that, that whatever he's singing, whether it's make a way, Lord, or touch my body, Lord, or heal the church, Lord, heal the land, Lord, open doors, God, whatever the three, it don't be no more than five words in a sentence. Hallelujah. But it gets so stirred up on the inside. Hallelujah. And each one of us ought to be like that because Brother Jeremiah is not in the doctor's office. Brother Jeremiah is not in the hospital room. Brother Jeremiah, Brother Jacal, they ain't in your car when somebody pulls out in front of you and you ain't got but a split second to call on somebody and that's the name of Jesus. Not Jeremiah, not Jacal, not Bishop Cannon. Oh, but it's the name of Jesus by which we're saved, the name of Jesus by which we're healed, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, that makes us whole. Hallelujah, you can be seated. I'm going to move forward and take us an offering if that's all right with you, Bishop. Hallelujah. I'm excited in my spirit. Happy Father's Day to every father. Come on, ladies, put your hands together and celebrate a father. Hallelujah. If it was Mother's Day, we'd be celebrating mothers. Let's celebrate fathers. Hallelujah, Jesus. They take a bad rap. I was let, it was funny, but not funny. Somebody on social media said, so what, we just not celebrating Father's Day? Because they don't see, you know what I mean? When Mother's Day is coming, you, you hear the hype, you see the commercials. Now, I don't mean call it hype, but y'all know what I'm saying. You see the commercials, but when Father's Day comes, it's not the same. I know it's not the same because, you know, a woman carried a, a baby, but a father plays a very important role in every, in every child's life. There's just some things a mother can't do. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't subscribe to your mom, was your mom and your dad. No, my mom served her role, and she did the best she could in the space of an absentee father. Hallelujah, but it's nothing like a dad. So happy Father's Day to each of you. Happy Father's Day to our spiritual father. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate our pastor, the great Bishop Carlos Dwayne Cannon, and he's a senior. Hallelujah. And we bless the blesser. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. We're going to move forward in our worship on this morning through our giving. Hallelujah. I grew up learning you can't be God's given, and he has proven that time and time again, regardless of how much I tried. Um, and I didn't try to be God's given. I just tried to work it out my own way. So if you want to call it one and the same, I guess it is. But I tried to do what I could do, but I learned that when I trust God in all things, including the giving of my time, talent, and treasure, God always makes a way. He don't do it how I think he would. But he always makes a way. I can recall a time where I was in college and I didn't have money for my cell phone bill. And I was like, well, well, I'll just be disconnected. And you know, I went to college at a time where, y'all remember calling cards? So I went to college during a time where calling, calling cards. I was long distance from home. So I was signing up for all kind of credit cards to get that little 20 minute phone card. So I could call my mom, call my friends and whatever the case is. And I remember I didn't have money for my cell phone bill, but I think, I think I shared with y'all my story of tithing and how I learned what that 10% was. And it was just kind of like, oh, that's what that is. And the Lord told me, trust me or don't. So I trusted him and I never turned back. So in this particular instance, I ain't have enough money for my cell phone bill after I gave my 10% and my offering because I gave an offering also. So I said, all right, God, well, you know, you told me, prove me. Now here with saith the Lord of hosts that you'll open up windows for me. I bless and wouldn't have room to receive. So in my mind, I'm thinking the Lord going to give me money for my cell phone bill. But that ain't what he did. He caused AT&T to accidentally apply somebody else's money to my account that they didn't find it till two months later. So I told God, however, wherever. See, it don't always come in the form that you expect it to. 
It don't, it's not always a return in money, but it's a return in favor and grace upon your life. And in that instance, he granted me a little bit, a little 60 day grace. Let me get my coins up. And when they found it and they called me and they was apologetic to me, I was like, oh, I ain't worried about it. I got my phone service back. But it's just the fact that I recognized that was the hand of the Lord. It might even seem minor to you, but for a broke college kid with no way to talk to anybody, it meant the whole world to me at that particular point in time. So I challenge you, men and women of God, that do not forget God in your giving. If you're not a tither, I encourage you to try God. If you are a turn of our tithing, I encourage you to continue trying God because he's proven himself in your offering, in your, in your life, in your resources, in your mindset, in your health, because that's just the kind of God we serve. So with your offering in your hand, we're going to repeat our decree. I'm going to ask you to stand if you don't mind. It's a sign of assertion that you believe what you're saying. Hallelujah. This is my good seed. Y'all not saying it like you believe it. This is my good seed. And I'm sowing in the fertile ground. And by faith I decree, I will never be broke another day in my life. Thank you, thank you. You can pass your offering to the center. Hallelujah. And we'll receive it. Just by way of announcements, real quickly, um, Sister Cleo has t-shirts in the back. That and we, I call it our annual t-shirt fundraiser. I wear my shirts everywhere. But you can see her if you're interested in a shirt on next Sunday. Uh, somebody say next Sunday. We be, we'll be honoring our pastor because it, it will be his 50 plus birthday. I don't know if he wants to have nobody. He says he's 50 all over again. Or 50 plus shipping and handling maybe. We'll be celebrating him. Every member was asked to give a $100 seed in celebration of our leader. He doesn't ask for much, but he deserves much. He labors for this ministry. And I think I was sharing a story before when we were out on the land and somebody said, I don't need you to cut the grass. I just need you to seek God for me. I can cut the grass. And there are things when it comes to this ministry, Bishop don't need to worry about doing. I need him to hear from heaven for me. I can cut my own grass. I can, I can mop my own floors. But there is a connection that he has with God that can bring forth change in my life, that can bring forth healing and deliverance and strength in my life. And I need him. I need his portals cleared up so that he can receive from God. Amen. Amen. So let's be prepared to come next week and be a blessing to him. If you have a special note or celebratory words for Bishop, I ask that you put them on paper. We can hear them. But sometimes having it. When I used to work at DSU, one of the things I did was everybody was always fussing over everything you know nobody it was always something to fuss about but the thing that I cherish most is when I did something well somebody would send me an email to say thank you for responding or thank you for helping my daughter or I didn't know how I was gonna make this work and I used to keep a binder in my office called my reason why and when them days came and I wanted to quit like not not give you two weeks notice but like y'all can have this job I had this binder next to my desk and I would read the comments because sometimes you don't know how the smallest gesture can mean the world to somebody. So if Bishop has been there to you, I'm gonna ask that you pin something down for me. Ain't gotta be long, ain't gotta be deep. But find you a post, if you don't have a postcard, I have one next Sunday. But actually I got one in the office, I'll leave them in the hall. Leave your pastor a note, amen? Sometimes money is great and we appreciate it, we gonna honor him in money, hallelujah. But I wanna celebrate, I wanna honor our leader, amen? Amen, I'm gonna get out your way. He's coming at this time. Do me a favor and rest on your feet all over the building and receive Bishop Carlos Cannon, our pastor. Bishop C.D. Cannon, see you. Let us say amen for him. Praise the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Talk about my songs, do she? My songs get me through. Yeah. You got more bills than money, and you don't know where the money's coming from. I have to sit on the couch and say, Make a way, make a way. It's not in the hymn book, but. 
make a way. You know that song? It's all in your hand. Lord, you know the plan. Make a way. Make a way. She'd be like, there you go again. Had to be sitting in my house, Duffy. Make a way, make a way. I don't be knowing what key I'm in. Make a way, make a way. It's all in your hand. Lord, you know the plan. Make a way. Relationship with God, you get little intimate songs. Man. And I'll be daggone if every time I don't sing that song, not too many days hence, the Lord will make a way. And for that, I am grateful to God on today. I am so happy today. I'm full, I'm tired, oh. my eyes are sweating. Allergies acting up. Amen. But God is still good. Amen. Did that end a million? Did that end? I, my sight ain't what it used to be. Hey, nephew. I know that's right, man. Let me tell you all something. It pay to be nice to people. Don't cost nothing to be nice. Hallelujah. People will come and see you. Hallelujah. People will come and see you. Uh, honor God for everybody that's here. Honor God for everybody. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. This is your day. Uh, somebody, somebody inboxed me this morning talking about was I barbecuing today. <laughs> I said no. When I put a word before the no. <laughs> well, we take y'all to the finest restaurant. Buy y'all whatever y'all want. And then we got to cook on that day. I'm not barbecuing today. I'm not doing it. I'm going to, I'm going to Chima's. Oh, yeah, right on my couch. Yeah. Huh? I think I'm missing something, but pray for me. Oh, uh, Simon, I got something on my desk for you. Uh, Lester, I got something on my desk for you to give to Carlos when you see him. Duffy, stick your head in my office after the church. It's something else, but oh well. Let's go to the word of God. Thank God for these musicians. Amen. You're right. Make it go with I want to uh, journey back to Acts, the second chapter, if I may. I'm going to ride this out until the Lord say that's enough because I think it's important for us to all understand where we fit within the body of Christ um, because for so many years or for so a certain length of time uh, we have this feeling that if I don't have a title or if I don't serve or any capacity in ministry uh, I don't really know the relevancy of why I am in church but it is my intent to show through the word of God where everyone has a call and a purpose mm -hmm. yeah, your, call, your call and your purpose does not mean that you gotta go buy a robe next week it doesn't matter that you gotta get letters uh, uh, and words before and after your name. 
It just means I walk in what God has assigned for my life. Because we all have to realize, like, you, you weren't just born because. You're not here by happenstance. But when God created you, he created a masterpiece. When you, when you understand what God created and why God created it, then you don't, you won't take stuff off of people. Amen, somebody. And I don't have to take stuff off of you because I understand who I am. And I understand whose I am. God loved me enough to uh, make me who I am today. And, and for that, I owe him. Hallelujah. So Acts, the second chapter, uh, and for the, for the sake of time, I just want to read uh, verse 15 and verse 17, if that's all right. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing as it is but the third hour of the day. Verse 17, and, sh and it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Picking up part two of uh, my sermon titled, This Ain't That. This ain't that. Amen. This ain't that, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're now coming to understand that after Pentecost, um, I, I would hope and pray that all of us in here that have been coming to church regularly for the last month or so understands that the Holy Ghost is more than something that brings about emotions in your life. I would hope to believe that we understand now through the word of God that the Holy Ghost don't move our feet. It moves our situation. The Holy Ghost is more than just something that makes us cry when we think about how good he is. But the Holy Ghost is a conduit for us to serve and advance the kingdom of God. When we understand and when we understood exactly what Pentecost was, Pentecost was an, an, a, a pouring, an outpouring of the Spirit of God, but it was also an activation of the Spirit of God in you. Somebody say, in me. In me. Come on, say it like you mean it. Me. Say it so I can hear you. See, we've got to stop. We, 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 we've got to stop. Stop. Amen. Yes, yes. Now listen, let me, let me say this. If you don't want nothing, keep on doing what you've been doing. If you don't want nothing, this is not a fuss, this is not a chastisement. Uh, 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 this is just the word of God that is desiring to become life in you. Because for so many times, my, my wife was up here saying a minute ago, that your praise, your, 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 your lifeline to God should not be predicated on musicians. And, and contrary to popular belief, your conduit to God shouldn't even be predicated on your pastor. Amen. Most pastors ain't going to say that. Uh -huh. yeah, they they, they want to be in control. Uh -huh. But your conduit to God ought to be something that I have on the inside yes, that I know for myself. Amen. And it troubles my spirit. Uh, that a lot of us, when I say us, I, I speak from a generalistic place, a lot of us don't really know the power that we possess on the inside. Because we understand, if you understand that life and death resides in the power of the tongue, you would use your tongue more for good. Because we quick to cuss folk out. We quick to give folk a piece of our mind. My aunt, my aunt used to say, I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. My grandmother said, well, how many pieces do you have left? <laughs> like we have to be careful uh, when we speak out of our mouth for evil or for negative, but we find it difficult to speak positive over our life. Yes. Amen, somebody. Yes. Amen. You've got to be able to say out of your own mouth, I'm coming out. Yes. You've got to out of your own mouth say, I'm already healed. You've got to out of your own mouth say, I might be in a pit, but by faith I believe. Don't know how, don't know when, 
Y'all not wait seven days to get a word from God. That seven days ought not go by before you hear a word. You ought to be able to open up oh, your, oh, your own mouth. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want me to preach today. But you've got to understand that God loved you enough to activate something that's already on the inside of you. Remember the commercial, the spaghetti sauce called Prego. Mm -hmm. Most of y'all are ragu people, ragu people. You remember, Prego came on the scene. It's just one little slogan. It's in there. It's a little bell pepper. It's in there. Garlic. It's in there. Onion. It's in there. You got, wait, wait, now, with ragu, Mother Walker, you got to add a little something, something. A little pinch of this. A little smidgen of that. But with Pregu, they let you know. Ain't no adding to, and ain't no taking away, because all that you need is already in there. Once you crack the seal on that jar, it's going to be a gastronomical delicatessen delight. That's how you have to approach what God is doing in your life. It's in there. It is in me to be more than a conqueror. It is in me to be the lender and not the borrower. It is in me to be the first and not the last. I might not see it today, but I believe by faith it's in me. So we're coming to understand that the activation of the Holy Ghost is a incumbent upon every blood-washed believer. And three things that we taught about on the other week was that the Holy Ghost brings about a change the Holy Ghost brings about a challenge, and the Holy Ghost brings about a charge. Somebody say that with me. Say a change, a challenge, and a charge. A charge is nothing more than entrusting someone with a task, duty, or responsibility. That's what the Holy Ghost does. He entrusts you with a task, a duty, or a responsibility. We'll come to understand, we'll come to realize in the next few weeks uh, that those 12 disciples, those that were followers of Jesus Christ, after the activation or the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, they shifted from being followers of Jesus to now leaders. They shifted from being disciples to now apostles. A disciple is nothing more than one who submits to one and learns. An apostle is one that will now take what I have learned in order to teach someone else. In other words, we've got to learn something from God so that we can help someone else. If I can help. Then my living shall not be in vain <laughs> then my living be in If I can help, don't y'all thank God y'all pastor got the Holy Ghost? I'm led by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. If I can help somebody, 
how can I help somebody when I can't barely help myself? Because it's in him I move, it's in him I breathe, and it's in him I have my being. So I have to get to the place through the power of the Holy Ghost that I understand and embrace. Because there's a lot of stuff we come in to understand, but we're not embracing it. Y'all ain't going to talk back. I feel like preaching. Oh, I understand that Brussels sprouts and asparagus and broccoli uh, uh, is good for me. I come to understand it. Hallelujah. I come to understand that if I drink water and flush my system out, I can live a little longer. Oh, I understand it. Oh, I come to understand if I want to lose some weight, I got to walk a mile a day and, and get my heart right. Oh, I understand it. Don't you put no Brussels sprouts and broccoli on my plate. No, honey, the devil is a liar. <laughs> I don't embrace. Glory to God. A lot of stuff we're understanding in the church, but we have to embrace. We have to adopt it or receive it as our own. And the reason I'm taking time out for this is because uh, we've, we've mishandled the church. So most of us don't know how to embrace the Holy Ghost in its fullness based on the foolishness of what we've seen. Thank you, Mother Walker. I'm going to say it again. We don't know how to embrace the fullness of the Holy Ghost based off the foolishness that we've seen. The Holy Ghost makes you whole. But most of us have only seen the Holy Ghost uh, raise up in folk that act like hellions all week long but want to hold service up on Sunday. That's not the Holy Ghost. That's just you dancing. Just not at the Elks Lodge. That's you, par that's you partying. Just not at the starlight. Gentleman Joe's. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So we all have a charge. I'm trying. We, we have to walk in his way. Somebody say in his way. We got to stop doing what we want to do. Because contrary to popular belief, uh, when you accept the uh, indwelling of the Holy Ghost, it does bring about a change in your life. But most folk don't accept it because they don't want to change. They've, they've gotten com they've gotten com they've gotten com they've gotten comfortable in the state that I'm in. Now there's a difference between being comfortable in the state that you're in and content. I've learned to be content in whatsoever state I'm in, which means I, my trust is in God that wherever I find myself, I'm not going to trip. I'm not going to allow depression to overtake me. I'm just going to accept the fact that this is my lot and it is well with my soul. I'm in the pit, but I ain't going to be here long because I know God promised never to leave me nor to forsake me. And he promised to be with me all even till the end of world. So we've got to understand that all of us have a charge. Not just the pastor. Not just the preachers, but all of us. Not the musician, not the deacon, but all of us have a charge. There's somebody Monday morning on your job when you show up that needs the love of Christ in their life. You know, I'm getting ready to get in trouble now. Most of the ones that need the love of Christ is the ones that you don't like. The very one that need what you got is the one you can't stand right now. That's how God uses you. Speak to folk that you don't like. Some of y'all got more strength than you let on that you got. So we have this charge. But carrying out uh, uh, God's charge is only possible uh, when you do three things. Yes. Carrying out this charge. Carrying out this charge. You, you, you have heard the word. You have now received the word. But you need some things to help you 
uh, use the word for God to get the glory uh, 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 out, of, out of your life. Amen? Amen. Uh, so, so, so the first one this week uh, we're going to talk about is you've got to acknowledge God has purpose for your life. Yeah, it got quiet again. You've got to acknowledge that God has purpose for your life. Mm, still quiet. You've got to, the preacher can't prophesy, the prophet can't see it. You've got to acknowledge that God has purpose for your life. We're in a generation now of people, especially in the African American community, we know how to dress up dysfunction. We know how to camouflage our pain. The problem is, before we can go higher in God, we've got to go down. Anybody ever see the space shuttle? And when it takes off, it goes up so many feet in the air, and then the two tanks on the, on the sides fall off. Then it goes up a little further. Then the larger tank falls off. Then it can go up a little higher. Certain tanks have just enough fuel to push you to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But once that tank can't serve a purpose, it has to fall off. And the reason why some of y'all can't go higher in God is because you've been going through your life for the last 10, 15, 20, 30, 45 years carrying around empty tanks. Oh, I'm getting ready to work today. Mm -hmm. You can't run empty tanks. Folk that should have been fell off years ago. And not just people, but things. You can't be holding the marriage you in now because you're still holding on to the relationship that failed in 87. This ain't shade. This ain't petty. This ain't to throw off on nobody. But in order for you to go higher in God, you got to lay aside every weight. See, we get so caught up in the Pentecostal church about calling sin out. Who's shacking? Who's drinking? Who's snorting a line of coke? Who's tricking? And you pointing the finger at everybody that's sinning, and you the one carrying around the weight. Scripture don't say, uh, uh, Sin first, it says wait, that do so easily beset us. I was sharing with my wife, uh, as we were preparing for this message, I was, I was sharing with her how it isn't coming for us, uh, and I'm asking God to really anoint me because uh, I want to I wanna go through this thing, uh, but it's hard to go through this thing uh, and make you feel comfortable. Uh, let me see if I can tell you. Any, any sports players? Here, or former sports player. Here, here. Uh, here, here. What does what does training camp represent? Thank you. Training camp represents you ain't been with us for a few months, and you've been eating stuff you ain't supposed to eat. You ain't been working out like you supposed to work out. So we need a few weeks to go through to recondition you, to prepare you for what's to come. Because if we don't prepare you for what's to come, you're going to lose the game. Dak Prescott. <laughs> God is saying this season that, I, I'm only speaking for my church, that we're about to go in, it's going to be a reconditioning. You ain't going to like it. But it's going to prepare you to win. You can just, if you can just hang in there, you're going to win. But we've got to go back and dig up some bones that you've had hidden for years. We've got to go back and dig up some stuff that you thought you was getting away with. 
one, one, one of the problems, one of the problems why we can't really uh, 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 accept the fullness of God is because we don't think we're worthy of him. And for most of us that come, uh, I come from a poor family. I didn't have much. So anything that was contrary to what I was, I wanted. Because I didn't like the state that I was in. Am I helping anybody this morning? I didn't like the state that I was in. I didn't, I didn't like taking out the slop jar every morning. They don't know about that deep, do they? I don't like, you know, cleaning the soot out the wood stove. So if, so if little, hey, hey, she know about the outhouse. Yeah, right. No, 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 about no outhouse. Yeah, I didn't like, I didn't like priming the pump outside. Yeah, I didn't have running water till I was in the tenth grade. Yeah. So anything, anything that I had, I wanted the contrary to it. I wanted to go over to Bobby's house. Bobby dad worked for Dupont. Right there in Seaford. <laughs> Bobby, da- Bobby Dad had money. Yeah. Deacon Roger do got money. Bobby Dad had running water in their house. <laughs> Bobby, <and> them- <laughs> Bobby and them house, uh, all his siblings had their own bicycle. Okay. <laughs> Was you Bobby Dad? <laughs> So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like my house. I wanted to be old Bobby's house. Bobby's mom put them in the truck. They went to McDonald's. And Bobby's, Bobby's mom said, uh, whatever you want, go ahead and order it. I had to eat barbecue loaf. Spice lunch meat. So y'all, y'all, y'all was fortunate to have bologna. Oscar Mayer. My bologna has a first name. It's O S C A R. Uh huh. My bologna has a second name. Oh, I love to eat it every day. Nah, I couldn't afford bologna. Oh, y'all don't like this kind of preaching here. I got, I got, I remember one time, Jonathan, uh, we had a field trip to the Smithsonian Institute, the Air and Space Museum. And my grandmother scrounged up $2.50 just to give that with the permission slip for me to go. But we were supposed to pack lunch. We did. Oh, I'm going somewhere. Y'all just walk with me. I was in college prep classes. See, in my high school, you had general, you had college prep, and you had honors. I was too smart for general. I was too lazy for honors. <laughs> but in my class, it was more um, clear people. Right? So, so they had money to buy at the snack bar over in D.C. I had a little bag lunch, a little paper bag, brown paper bag, a little sandwich in it with a can of soda wrapped in aluminum foil. <laughs> Reynolds wrapped it. No, see, you, 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 y'all, y'all, y'all that upper middle class. Mine didn't say Reynolds wrapped, it said foil. Went to D.C., had to eat my little bag lunch. They buying the little tang, the little powdered ice cream. And I don't have no money. So now everybody around me is enjoying the trip. And I'm now frustrated because I can't be like everybody else. I'm just talking about me. So I've got to try to have fun 
to camouflage the fact that I wish I had stayed home. Because at the end of the day, after the field trip is over, I still got to go back to nothing. Don't feel bad for me. I made it out. <laughs> but 50 years, 49 years later, those memories still reverberate in my mind of how I used to be. So now let's fast forward a few years of making a declaration. I'll never go back to that. So I work my fingers to the bone to make enough money to provide for my family, to give a little something to my friends when they need it. And then if I want to go to the Air and Space Museum and buy me some tang and some powdered ice cream, I can. I don't do stuff nowadays because I want to. Some stuff I do because I can. I went to I went to read this. Oh, I'm preaching good today. If you don't like this, come back next Sunday. I'm gonna do the same thing again. I went to read this the other day. And uh the young lady said, What size would you like? My wife said, Behave. I said, Oh, give me a quart. Give me a quart. I ain't need no quart of water. <laughs> but I can. If I, if I had a driver, I'd go to Chima's every day. Not that I want that steak every day, but because I can. So do you, are y'all with me? Okay. So, so do you understand the dichotomy between how I was raised versus where I am? I do things now to circumvent what I couldn't do before. I overextend myself now because of the underextending before. And what happens now is, if I'm not careful, I will find myself unintentionally playing the part of God. Because he said, I am Jehovah Jireh. I will provide. My wife and I shouldn't have 15 businesses. Go to sleep every night, 1 o'clock, wake up every day, 4. Because in my mind, I ain't going back to that. And see, a lot of times, we, you know, we, we, we want to judge folk that do certain stuff. A lot of folk don't sell drugs because they want to be rich. A lot of folks sell drugs because they, they, they want to know where the next meal comes from. They want to take care of their children. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching. So Cannon had to get to the place where, uh, and this is, this is, I just got to this place a few years ago. preaching and still bound. Y'all don't like this. Preaching and still bound. That's why some of y'all self-righteous Negroes get on my nerves. Because y'all act like y'all go through life like you dotting every I and crossing every T. Y'all act like you never uh, make a mistake. And God can't get the glory out of nobody that act like they just perfect. You got every answer for everything. You done cornered the market on life. You trying to help everybody while you drown in yourself. You just learn how to mask it. Shelby says, Shelby Steve said, uh, the devil keep telling lies. But I know the truth. So I had to acknowledge, this is pastoring, Brother Steve, this is preaching. I had to acknowledge that God had purpose for my life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And once I begin to acknowledge that God had purpose for me, he didn't take me to the future, he took me to my past. Yes, because he had to show me all the hell that I thought I was going through was to get me to the place where there's a word in my life that I could help somebody. 
maneuver in the state that they're in. Because don't nobody care about how much words you can preach, teach. Folk want to know, what has God done for you? I know, I, know what pastor, I know what pastor is preaching. Uh, I know what they're teaching. But what has he done for you? That's why I say sometimes uh, uh, another woman needs to testify to another woman. Because there are some things that women just go through that men can't even imagine. I don't see, man. <laughs> I don't see how some of y'all, you know, I know, I know we have children for the love of children, and we have children, you know, you know, ha, 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 ha. If I was a woman, man, I'd be one and done. No, doc. You mean to tell me giving birth is the closest thing to death? The devil is alive. I ain't trying to die no time soon. Push. <laughs> nah, baby, no, no, no. Some things a man goes through needs another man that when I can't find it in the word, we can just talk mano y mano about how we understand. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I can't get into it today, you know, but some, some brothers need to have real conversation. That's why I'm getting ready to start uh, 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 men on Mondays. Me and the brothers are going to get together. Me and the brothers. We're going to talk brother stuff. And let me tell y'all women, don't ask what we talked about when we get home. Nunyan. We talk about what y'all talk about when y'all together. How about that? We're going to talk about men's stuff. Men's stuff. I was so glad this year. I was so glad this year because I, I was ready. I was so glad this year. I saw no posts. I heard nobody talk about and Father's Day to you mothers, too. I was so glad. Because I get tired of every year hearing that stuff. And yeah, I know, honey, some of y'all single moms are doing the best you can and raising your children the best you can and doing the best you can, but it does not negate the fact that they still a man that helped make that child. I know y'all might not get along together. Y'all might not talk and all that kind of stuff. He might not be allowed to be around, but he still need a man in his life. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching, so I just might well keep on going. I got a problem with y'all women that you want to subjugate the man now. But you, were, you weren't subjugating seven years ago. Well, I ain't get too many amens on that one. You was ooing and I'm like, <laughs> I'm trying to get through the message. So, so we have to acknowledge. Somebody say acknowledge. acknowledge. Do you believe that God has purpose for your life? Like, do you believe it? And not just say yes because I asked the question. But do you believe in the state that you're in, all that you've been through in life, God did not make a mistake when he created you? Because you know, some of us that grew up in houses, we had to hear that. Yeah. Had to grow up in houses, Elder Carolyn, where, where we had to hear stuff like, I wish you were never born. I can't even, it turns my guts to just look at you. Get on my nerves. I can't say it like I want to. but We've had to hear that kind of stuff. And what do you think? Uh, happens to a person that all throughout their formulative years has to hear stuff like that. Hurt people hurt people. And we got a lot of hurt people in the pulpits in churches all across America preaching around stuff, preaching over stuff, but won't preach to stuff. God wants us to be free. But we've got to acknowledge the fact that he first wants us. Even when nobody else wanted you, God wants you. Yes. Even when nobody else wanted to deal with you, God had need of you. Yes. Purpose by definition is the reason for which something exists or is done, made, or used. 
an intended desire or results, end, aim, or goal, purpose. The reason why which something exists. Think about it real quick here. Most of us shouldn't even be here today. For real, whether you're locked up, dead, whatever. Shouldn't be here today. Especially some of my older members. Where y'all used to party back in the day. Ask me how I know. Yeah. I laugh at the young folk now talk about how they party. Don't nobody party like old folk that used to be young folk. Old folk, look at Brother Steve smiling. <laughs> Brother Steve ain't smiled this hard in three weeks. <laughs> Chef is regal, right? I ain't forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Old folk would shut the party down. Then you leave the party, go to somebody's house. Cut the red light on. Oh, let me get back to this. I'm still here. And lung cancer ain't take me out. All the cigarettes I used to smoke. Not me, I'm just talking. I'm still here. And cirrhosis of the liver ain't take me out with all the liquor, the rock gut I used to drink, the, the E and J, the irk and jerk, the easy Jesus, all that I used to drink, and I'm still here. Should have a broke leg, have a dislocated hip, as many windows that I climbed out of when, when the husband came home from off the world. I'm still here. I'm sorry, Mother Walker. I'm sorry. Not us. Not us. We sanctified Mother Walker. But it goes on. It's, that's why they're laughing. But they're everybody laughing. If it ain't them, they know somebody. Think about what you used to do. And some of y'all used to do it. You ain't just a talker, but you used to do it. You old mashed potato doing self. Why to see? Hallelujah. Yeah, the funky chicken. Rufus, that's my God, Rufus. You know about the funky chicken? Every now and then, Duffy, I go on YouTube. I go on YouTube. I, I got to say this thing I don't do with the message, but I go on YouTube and pull up uh, Watts, Stacks, and it went Watts, and Isaac Hayes, when he came out with all the chains on. You know, she said, she, she, yeah, I know what he's talking about. Rance Allen. Yeah, the preaching Rance Allen. Uh, y'all better know y'all history. Uh-huh. Then the funky chicken. Rufus came out, got the uh, cackling like a chicken. Them black folk in Oakland started coming out, bleachers coming out the stands, and everybody was. <laughs> the 60s and the 70s was some good times. Every now and then I pull up Superfly. Oh, yeah. Curtis, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Yeah. Curtis, dun dun dun, dun dun dun, dun 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 dun. dun. Freddie's dead. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was just talking about that yesterday. I know y'all been saved all your life. In, 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 in Superfly, uh, the man didn't have all priest money. And the other man walked to the house. He said, if you don't get my money tonight, psh, them the days right there, boy. If you still here, I got to preach this text like God gives it. By the grace of God, you've got to realize that you lost some friends along the way. So, some family members, some, some running partners ain't here no more, but you're still here. And it's because God mm -hmm, has a purpose and an assignment for your life. I got Bible. I got Bible to back me up. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. In other words, before your mother and father got together... Climbed in the back of that 70 Chevelle. Yes, Deuce and a quarter. Hallelujah. God had an assignment 
for you. Yes, sir. Now, I don't want to get too deep into it today because I want to hurry up and get out of here. But they talk about how many uh, sperm cells are released from a man yeah. that has to swim up the tube in order to just get to one egg. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So when I hear the wine and sing the song, millions didn't make it, but I was one of the ones that did. They talking about making it to heaven. But I think about life because all the sperm could have just died in travel. But God gave strength to one of them just to reach an egg that was in my mother, even at a young age, to produce me to be who I'm here today. That's why I bless God. I might not be where I want to be. Surely ain't where y'all think I need to be. But I thank God because I'm here by his grace. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And somebody say, and. and. Come on, say it like a preacher. And. And, and before thy came as forth out of the womb, and. I sanctified thee. And say, and. and. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. In other words, all of y'all, when you were born, was ordained with something. Yes. Never have a mic in your hand. Never have a robe on your back. But there's an ordination that God did. I ain't got to touch you with my right hand. But God birthed you for something. It's not until you get to the place where you acknowledge that you have purpose. You had purpose. God made it clear that he had chosen and charged Jeremiah before he was even born. Despite the excuses that Jeremiah gave you. You've got to stop giving God excuses. You, you just got to say, here am I, God sent me. Yes, I have a stammering tongue. I have low self-esteem. I have, have an identity crisis. I don't have enough money. Uh, no matter what excuse you give God, God can eradicate every excuse. But you just got to say, here I am, God. Even in your prayer time with God, you've got to make up in your mind, God, heal me from me. Can I preach like I feel it? A lot of times we've been realizing that people have done us wrong and situations that may not have been optimal. But sometimes if you can just look back over your own life, you've got to know that God has got to first do a work in you. And in order for God to do the work in you, he's got to first heal you of your mistakes. Can I have your permission to preach like I feel it? <laughs> Some things I've got myself into, uh, the devil had nothing to do with. <laughs> Some things I did in my life, I did because I was either grown enough to do it or I thought I was grown enough. <laughs> I made some mistakes along the way. <laughs> 20 years, 30 years later, <laughs> I'm still uh, having a recollection of the mistakes that I made. <laughs> but when I got to the place in my Christian journey <laughs> where I wanted to God to get the glory out of my life, <laughs> I said, God, heal me from the inside out. I know I have a mother and a father. <laughs> Thank you for the family and the friends. <laughs> but before I can do anything, God, I need to lay me down <laughs> and do a surgery in my life. <laughs> Help me to be the best me I can be. <laughs> and when helping me be the best me that I can be, <laughs> I had to realize that I might rub people the wrong way. <laughs> they might misinterpret what I do. <laughs> but God, as long as you lead me and guide me along the way, <laughs> weeping may endure for a night. Let's ride, Jeremiah. <laughs> but I realized that joy is going to come in the morning. <laughs> God made it clear <laughs> that there's a purpose to the life of Jeremiah. <laughs> and Cannon's trying to make it clear today. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you were born uptown or downtown. <laughs> you were born in poverty or born with a silver spoon in your mouth. <laughs> You've got to realize 
Jesus. God has a plan for your life. Come on, say it like you mean it. Open up your mouth and say, God has a plan for me. Yes, even when I don't realize it, God has a plan. When you read in the scripture, God didn't tell Jeremiah he would restore mankind like he told Noah. He didn't tell Jeremiah that he was going to be used to free nations like he told Moses. He didn't tell Jeremiah that he was going to bring the walls of Jericho down like he told Joshua. But he told Jeremiah that before you were even born I had a work for you to do yeah yeah you got to know this morning that the power of God will never have maximum impact if you don't use it for purpose you got to use the power of God for its intended purpose I'm ready for what the law has for me you got to tell the devil you've been riding long enough but now now is the time that I give my life holy and acceptable unto God God use me for your service have your way in my life Jesus knew the purpose was to come on his life he understood that I came came to life to point men back to God I came to help save save the Lord yeah Jesus oh God Jesus he knew what his assignment was he didn't come to turn water into wine he didn't come to raise Lazarus from the dead he didn't come to help the woman that had the issue of blood but he came I said he came to tell a dying world Jesus still saves Jesus still delivers and Jesus still sets free I got the clothes but whatever you need is in the hand of the Lord get ready because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord has for you take your hand your right hand your right hand represents the authority of God lay it on yourself and say Lord heal me Lord renew me Lord activate me for your service yeah when when God pours out his spirit upon all flesh we go through great exploits for the kingdom of God I got the clue yeah I said I got to quit but let me leave you with this when we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ we realize he's everything that I need he's the author finisher of my faith he's the first and the last he starts it and finishes it but I I 
yeah, 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 yeah. I got to work, work the middle. Yeah. I got to work the works of him that sent me. He sent us here for a reason. He sent us here for purpose. Say yeah. Yeah. I got to quit. Let me leave you with this. Hear me clearly, and I'm done. God will remove problems that He sees are hindering purpose. Hear me. Hear me. God made you for purpose. He created you for a reason. Anything that hinders why he created you. And see, here's the, per here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. A lot of us don't know what our purpose is. A lot of us don't even know why we're here. It's hard to live a life pleasing to God and you don't know how to do it. He said, you got to learn of me. You got to learn of me. You got to learn of him. And for so many years, most of us in this church, from me to the door, have had to deal with preachers preaching at us and not to us. Get right, get left, get... get. to leave here today hey! knowing all my life I thought I was a mistake so I had to deal with whatever was presented to me baby girl not today today is a new day let today be the first day of the rest of your life watch this watch this what did I say God will remove problems that he sees is hindering purpose. Notice I said hindering, not stopping. Because God's plan can only be slowed up. It can never be stopped. If God can give Moses power to move water, Joshua the power to tear down walls, and Jeremiah the power to overcome fear, Do you want it? Do you see? It's okay when we push responsibility on others. But to whom much is given? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Some folk don't want it because they didn't know they could have access to it. Some folk don't want it because they don't want what go along with it. To whom much is given, much is required. I would rather give much to know that I'm going to get much than to do nothing and get nothing. Am I helping anybody here? We've got to get to the place where we realize God did not just pour out his gift of the Holy Ghost for leaders. Everyone that can hear this word needs to know they too can be a recipient of all that God has for them. God not going to give you what he got for me. And God not going to give me what he got for you. My grandmother 
She liked peanut brittle. She would go to Dollar General, buy her little box of the peanut brittle. It, it came in the little, the little uh, silver bag, but the bag was inside a box. Yeah. Couldn't see what was in there. And what she would do, she would take one bag and she would divide it into thirds and put them in a sandwich bag. Because she would say, your eyes may shine and your teeth may grit. But what's for me, you ain't going to get. <laughs> so her box, she would put in her room. She had a little sewing kit. It was, it, was about, it was about that tall, and it was about that wide. And you had to peel the top off. I ain't going to tell y'all that I used to go sneaking in her room trying to find out where she hid stuff. Oh, that day I found that stone kit. My God, today. It was like a treasure chest. But she would, she would, she would take the one box and she would separate it into three sandwich bags. One would be for me. The other one would be for my cousin and, and his sister. One for me. One for my cousin. I'd hurry to be mine the first day. I was a little ornery child. I'm just being honest. And then the next day, I'd be like, Mama. She's like, no, that's, you can't have that. You ate yours yesterday. But Mama. Right here. Next day. But Mama. Can't have that. Three days went by. No, you can't have that. It's not for you. You ate your first day. The lesson is, she had something for my other cousins that she would not let me get. Because it was already separated for who it belonged to. Okay, now, I ain't going to tell y'all that after about four or five days, I stopped asking. And I would just go in these bags. I'd pinch off a little bit out of this bag. Pinch off a little bit out of that bag. All of you leave here today knowing God has something for you. We live in a day and time now where everybody want a bishop, everybody want to be an apostle, everybody want to be a prophet. There's so much more to do in this world. We come to church to get empowered to be used in the kingdom. See, we thought just once a week you go to church, Sunday go to meeting, and you just have an emotionally high time. And then after that, you just go to work all week, come back next Sunday for church. No, you come to church to get filled, to pour out out there. Who are you helping on your job? Now, hold it. helping on your job, please don't go to work tomorrow. And you stand at that door when everybody walk in. You know Jesus. You need to know Jesus. Come here, let me lay hands on you. Because you're going to call me talking about Bishop, I just got laid off my job. I know. Don't you know, don't you know you can help people just by keeping your mouth shut? I forget who the writer was, but that was a song out in the 80s. You talk too much. The saints of God, we talk too much sometimes. Especially when you get mad and attitudinal. Some of us have been known to go left when we get an attitude. I said us. That's why scripture says study to be silent. Well, how can I help somebody, pastor, if I'm quiet? This is how the conversation will go. One of your co-workers will observe you for two or three days. And for two or three days, you've had one. I can't say what I want, Aunt Mary. You can't. Can I say, can nephew say what he want, Aunt Mary? Go ahead, nephew. 
two or three days, you had a hell of a week. But you sat at your little cubicle. You was right on the line in the factory doing what you were supposed to do. Never once complained. Never said nothing. Folk being nasty to you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yep. Let me see what I can do to help you out. One day on the break room, in the break room, somebody going to come to you and say, excuse me, I know you're a private person. But can I just talk to you for a minute? Yeah. And in your mind, you want to say, what? <laughs> but you say yes. Yeah. And then they'll say something like, you know, all week I've watched you. And they'll start running it down. Monday this happened, Tuesday that happened. And just how you handled it, I would go home at night and tell my husband, God knows I couldn't do what they did. And I just want to know, how you doing? Now the door has been opened for you to say, you know what? It wasn't me. Because honey child to me, would have stepped out from this cubicle <laughs> so, so to ask me how I did it I can't answer that but since you're here let me tell you how I was able to do it there's this thing called God he's in me and when times get rough and chaotic and hectic, he picks me up and puts me to the side. And then he steps up in me. And he's like a puppet master. So on them days that you would have went left, I probably would have too. But the puppet master controls my strength. Well, can I get that from Amazon? No, my sister. You got you to gotta come see a man. Come see a man. Come to church? Sure, come to church. See, some of y'all can't invite folk to church because you don't show church in you. Some of y'all go to work, folks don't even know you say, hold up, back up. No shade. No shade. Are you saved? Some of us, some, some of us, some of us got common law salvation. Some of, some of, you can be with a woman, you can be with a man for so many years, you're common law married. You can be in church for so long, you learn the antics of church. But have you ever given your life to God? You've been in church all your life. You know, hey, you know how to do that. You know how to put your feet on the floor. Feet on the floor. Feet on the floor. But are you even saved? We think we are that you are. Because you come every I do. I been praying, Lord. You got all these clothes that you wear that make you look it. Nobody loves you enough to ever ask you because we're in a season now and that's past. I told my wife this morning, come here so they can see you nod your head. I said to her as I was getting dressed, I said, you know, I was in the bathroom just getting ready for church and a heaviness just came over me. And I told her, I said, you know, if I, if I went to a psychologist or a psychiatrist, they probably, they, they, they probably, you know, they probably pronounced me depressed. And she looked at me like, why would you say that? Y'all don't know the weight of a pastor. Somebody count how many people in this room real quick. Somebody quick. We just accept that you say. 
I just, my, I'm gonna say the book more because I know Mother Walker. I just, ex- I just expect the fact that Mother Walker saved because she just looked like a church mother. She always got a hat on her head because the scriptures say you got to have the glory. So I expect it. But in the Brett Clyde, Brett Steve, Brett Solomon, Brett Lester, I'm, I'm done with them. Because when Bishop be talking that prophetic stuff, they don't move, but he talk about Shevich Regal. You know, he talk about like, you know, Rick Ross and stuff. They move. So I don't know. And we busy looking at the outward appearance of a person trying to judge what God they got. How many? How many people? 42. 42 people in this church right now. I don't know how many online. And at any given moment, no matter where I am and what I'm doing, I got to stop it and pour. I could be down to Fort Lauderdale. Somebody call me. I got to stop and pour. I could be barbecuing. I got to stop and pull. Stop and pull. Stop and pull. Stop and pull. Stop. Some of y'all don't care about Big Hurt. We can need a fill-in. I need them to stop and pull. Yes, sir. Now we got the flip side. We got the flip side. I'm done. I got, you know. We got the flip side. Those that don't want to bother to get the stop and pour so you remain empty. Then you fall off the cliff. Now I got to stop and run. Stop and run. I ain't going to bother you. I ain't going to bother you. You're busy. But the Bible says, I'll give you pastors after my own heart. I got to be on 24 hours a day. Even when I'm off, I got to be on. heavy. It's the puppet master. Picks me up. Puts me to the side. And he said, let me control you for a season. So you don't bring a reproach against who I am. I don't want to have, Deacon Rocky, you say Because I don't want to offend. The hardest thing about pastor now is not get the word from God. I'm a professional preacher. I could preach y'all happy when Mary had a little lamb. You can give me a subject and I'll give you a sermon. Mary had a little lamb, a fleece white snow, there with the Mary. Mary. Mary had a little lamb. Fleece white snow. I'm a t- the lamb was sure to go. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Okay. Uh huh. But I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about how after they left from school to go home, that lamb fell in a mud pile and got dirty. And because Mary loved her lamb so much, she had to give the lamb a bath, and she missed her dinner. Oh, I'm gonna put it together. And the moral of the sermon gonna be y'all busy playing with something and fooling around with something. And it's going to mess up one day. It's going to miss where you're trying to go. I I can put a sermon together. But are you saved? You ask somebody they saved now, they're going to cuss you out. What you mean? I've learned how to act saved. Ain't that enough? 
acting days are over. Salvation has nothing about to do with what you do on Sunday. Now, if you save, make you want to come to church. Somebody on your job needs the God in you. Somebody in your family needs the God in you. Somebody on your friends list needs the God in you. It is a surreal feeling to be in Philadelphia, New Jersey, Cleveland, Flint, Florida, Vegas. And me and my wife minding our own business. And people walk up to us and be like, I follow y'all on Instagram. Y'all so sweet. I'm like, girl, I'm trying to get something to eat. But you'd be surprised at the people who know you that you don't even know. Yeah. We'd be in the airport. The cannons. When we come to church, them niggas. Oh, yeah, y'all ain't got to say amen to me. to acknowledge there is purpose to your life. Because I'm going to say this and we're going to pray and we're out of here. Uh, 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 oh, and for Solomon's son and, and, and for me, uh, we got to give them some money today. I forgot about it last week. You got it in your hand? Uh, for graduation. All right. Don't let them forget. Because right. what happens is you forget and then the next person graduates, you do for them, and you genuinely forgot. Now half the church mad because they didn't do it for my son. Yeah, see, I try, I try to tell y'all, I told the saints on Thursday night, wait till you get in this space. Because it's easy to sit there and articulate. It's easy for you to think about what you got going on in your life. When you got to think about the lives of 40 and 50 and 60 other people, can I, can I say something you don't get offended? And the multiple spirits that some of them got. Because some of us are tripolar. I didn't want to say bipolar because that's, that's clinically, so I didn't want to offend nobody. But tripolar is not a word, and some of y'all chuckle because y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, okay, since y'all, some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about, some of y'all have a personality before you get your coffee in the morning. Some of you have a personality after you work more than nine hours. Some of you have a personality when your spouse is tripping. That's just three. I could go on. I laugh. Some of the saints, y'all don't get that Starbucks in the morning? The saints get attitudinal. I was trying to help somebody one day, Mother Walker. I'm trying to quit for real. And we stopped and got some Dunkin' Donuts coffee. And I was wondering why the sister was a little attitudinal for the rest of the morning. All just mean and cantankerous. Like, wasn't saying nothing, but you could tell, you could tell a person they talk without talking. Now, I'm mad because I spent on the, on, on, on the coffee. She going to say, this ain't Starbucks. I said, and the money that was spent wasn't your money. <laughs> like, folk, y'all get territorial when it comes to this coffee. Dunkin' Donut coffee. Pepsi, not Coke. Get away from me. Go from me. White meat, not dark meat. That's your problem now. You've been eating too much white meat. <laughs> I'm <not> sure. <laughs> that was free for somebody. We're going to ride it.
it's going gonna, it's gonna, to, listen, it's going to make some of you uncomfortable. It's going to make some of you uncomfortable. Some of you going to get mad. Guess what? Trust Steve to tell you. Going on 17 years, they mad every month. Brother Steve been rocking me for a long time. He'll tell you. But I, I promise you, if you embrace it, you'll be the much better for it. Because when you understand your purpose, you stop chasing behind others and theirs. And you start walking in yours. When you, when you understand your purpose, you'll stop settling. And you'll put a demand on how people treat you. When you understand your purpose, you, 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 you uh, no longer exist in being a dumpster. See, your purpose is never to just be an open container for people to always call you and dump on you. Am I talking right, sis? Everybody want to dump on you, and you left holding the garbage. And I don't know about where y'all live, but the trash man only come on Thursdays in my house. So you want to, you want to dump on me today, and I got to... Y'all ain't going to help me preach. I'm trying to get out of here. You want to dump on me so you can be free. And I got to hold this till the garbage man come. No, baby, I'm going to dump right back on you. Come on over my house. Dump on me all you want. Just dump. And before you leave my house, before you hang up the phone, before we close this inbox. But wait a minute. What's good for the dumpy ought to be good for the dumper. So while you had a good dump on me, I'm going to have good diarrhea on you. We both going to be heavy till the trash man come. If you want me to burden yours, then baby, you got to burden mine. Am I talking right? How many of y'all have played the part of the dumpster? People know what to say. If I could just get $50 from you till payday. You ain't got a job. So when is payday? Purpose. Purpose. I thank God for these brothers that's coming. I thank God for these brothers that's coming. Because watch this. Oh, that's on. Brothers keep coming. Brothers keep coming. Brothers keep coming. Happy Father's Day. I thank God. For these brothers, yes. hear my heart, I promise I'm trying to quit. Just because you're a man, I think, God, mm. yes, every man ain't got to be a preacher. No, every brother ain't got to be no deacon. Just be a good brother. Yes, be a good father. Yes, be a good husband. Yes. Be a good son. Be a good uncle. Be a good something in the community. Yes. Yes. I'm trying to push these brothers to be, come on, Doc, calling you to be a preacher, Doc. Come on, Solomon, Solomon. The Lord said, I see a prophet on you. Yeah, I see prophet on him. But don't mean he got to prof- prophesy in the prophetic. I see a mantle that he can help other young men. Yeah. I'm going to throw this microphone. Because y'all ain't hearing what I'm hearing. Le- is, is Lexi, is she, is she watching it there? She's she, she sick, sleep, sleep, sick. She's on. Is she still on? If she's still on. Tell her to say something. Well, she can't say nothing. Tell her to type something. She can be home talking, I'm on, Uncle Lo-. I can't hear you, honey. Just type it. Okay. You, you got your phone, honey? Go to, go to Lexi Page on Instagram. I'm done, I promise. But this, this, this is going to drive my point home. Yeah. Go I'm going to show y'all just exactly what the 21st century kingdom meaning prophet is. Because all y'all thought we got to go get vestments. They got an Uruba Shunday. I don't know what Uruba Shunday is. I typed Uruba Shunday. It just nothing came up. You got her page yet? Go to read the post. 
about Happy Father's Day. And I'm, I'm, when you get to the part, I'm going to tell you stop. Read. Stop. God will use you in areas outside the church that will bring about a change in people that once thought could be no change. Yes, 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 So when I say I see something on somebody, it don't mean they got to get a Bible. And that's the problem with the church now. We got too many people with Bibles and ain't got no power. Oh, you know the word, but you ain't living it. Who are you changing? He didn't say it. The girl said it to the world. Now, I know what you're saying about me in private, but what is you saying to the world? Preach Bishop Cannon. God sent that man into that girl's life. Hallelujah. And did something good nobody do. Well, Lady Cammy, if she fried fish, she could do something. <laughs> That's what prophet, prophetic is to bring about a change in somebody's life. And we busy, see, we got to ask God to deliver us from what we thought church was. God don't just use you in the church, He uses you in the world. Why are you busy judging folk? They ain't married. Shut up. You wasn't either with your first seven kids. Well, I only got three. I know. I'm going to say it again. You wasn't married with your seven, but you only got three. Where are the other four? Where are the other four? Somebody say, where are they at, Bishop? In the doctor's office, in the trash. With your sanctified self. You busy looking down your nose at folk that God sent in here to try to bring about a change in people's lives, yes. and you ain't been so holy with your holy looking self. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's the problem now. What examples are we to the kingdom? It ain't it ain't that I can't preach. My shot. Cause I can preach. But what is you living? You gotta ask yourself the question: Why folk will, will, will tune into the Zoom? I mean, tune into the stream, but won't come to the temple? What they know about you? That you a stumbling block. I was trying to stop the message a long time ago, but somebody's still pulling on me. The more you pull, the more I preach. Let your light so shine. Matter of fact, I'm going to go back to what I did. We used to do uh, pre-COVID. Somebody said, what's that? Well, I wasn't going to say it, but since you asked. <laughs> I used to show up to people's jobs. Right to the reception office. Hey, is Carolyn Walker Pittman here? She's in the back. Who's here? Her pastor. And then you start pe seeing people, uh, 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 Peeking all out. You know what them peaks mean? Child, she got a past. Is that Miss Vanita? That, that's Miss Vanita. Your name not Vanita, is it? Uh-huh. What's your name? Stephanie, yeah. 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 Past. Then they start coming out from everywhere. Because it's like they get on an all call. Do, 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 do. Carolyn Pastor here. Carolyn Pastor here. Doom, doom, doom. Carolyn Pastor here. Carolyn Pastor here. Then they all start coming out. And then me. Then me. I play with it. Praise the Lord. How is my daughter at work? Hey, we ain't got enough time in the day, Reverend. With the job talking back to your supervisor. I quit. 
acknowledge you got purpose. Acknowledge you had purpose. My mother got pregnant with me and she's 13 years old. I could have been aborted. I never knew who my father was till 1989, the day I graduated high school. I come up on the rough side of the mountain. Too much has happened to me. You got that? Is that a note for me? Good. Hurry up. Somebody got to leave. Oh, okay. Thanks. Hold on, y'all. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where was it? Purpose. All that has been happened to me in my life, I could have not knew who I was. I know I ain't the only one here had a rough life, but God, and let me say this as we pray and go home, it didn't happen overnight for you to get where you are. It's not going to happen overnight for God to do what he needs to do in your life. I'll be 40, I'll be 48. Next year, next week. It'll be 48 next week. And I kid you not, I'm still learning about myself. I'm the pastor. I'm a bishop. And it's not a, not a month that don't go by that I'm not still learning about myself. And I'm not still trying to be better in who I am. So don't care how much you praise God, you still never arrive. But when you begin to walk in purpose, see, a lot of y'all, never mind, I'll say that next week. Walk in purpose. God, we thank you for this sermon. We thank you for this service. We thank you for this time of fellowship, thanksgiving. Trust and pray, God, something that's been said or done that's been edifying to these, your people. God, make us who and what you have called us to be. Help us, God, to realize that you never made a mistake when you created us. We're not just here by happenstance, but we're here by your grace. We're here by your mercy. Help us to walk in our assignment. Help us to identify our purpose so that you can get the glory out of our lives. Let us not walk in purpose so that we can be a celebrity, so we can take the glory. But let us walk in our purpose so that we can advance the kingdom of God. I pray for every man and every woman today, God, under the sound of my voice. It's not for us to know their personal lives but it is for us to pray for them as they go through this thing called life. Someone may be going through a storm right now. We pray, God, that you lead them and guide them, help them navigate the waters of life. Someone may be sick in their body, God. We know you to be a healer. Touch them now, God, from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Some may just need direction, God. Blow on their life. In the name of Jesus, have your way in us the more. Let us receive your glory, God. Heal us and deliver us. Set the captive free. Do it, God. As we leave this place, God, but not from your presence, give us traveling mercy over the dangerous highways until we meet again. Look upon Sister Miranda, God, right now. Cover her. Comfort her, O oh God, in her hour of bereavement. In the name of Jesus. Meet us here next week, God. And we'll do it all over again. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Real quick before you go. Um, some of you have had the privilege of going down to the Laurel Church. Uh, Laurel is our second location. You remember Sister Miranda, uh, the white girl. She comes here sometimes too. 